Um, unfortunately, we did not get the um, the injunction that we requested. Um, that being said, I am not disappointed. Well, I am disappointed, but I, I understand what happened. And so I am concerned given the urgency and the uptick of, of COVID and COVID related issues um, within the state. And so I'm, I'm worried that while the judge did say that um, everything in it in our uh, case was had merit and was factual, that she stopped short of saying anything in terms of, of offering a temporary restraining order or an injunction because um, although she's sympathetic, offering information or evidence to support the fact that um, COVID actually is transmitted in the school would be a strong burden for us to overcome in terms of supplying evidence due to outside um, influences and outside factors. And so um, what I'm hoping is that although we did not prevail today, um, the other side, the, the district slash state side was in, in the courtroom and they did hear the testimony and they also heard that um, the evidence and, and they heard the judge say that um, she empathizes and sympathizes and hears what what we went through in, in my school in terms of, you know, the covering of classes and, and things like that and how it was not instructionally sound. And so we're hoping that this um, pushes the district for us to have a conversation um, about providing a guidance document that is applicable to all schools should they find themselves in that um, in that same predicament. And um, well, I know that folks say, oh, you know, the, the injunction said Nathaniel Green, it said Nathaniel Green, but the remedy was for Nathaniel Green in all schools across the district. And we're basically just looking for a formula that um, shows us what the metrics is by which a school or schools would move into distance learning for a period of time and then come out of distance learning and go back to in-person learning. 